CES was hailed as a wonder drug that would produce healthy babies, but millions of those babies, mostly women, had their health compromised by the drug. And now new research reveals another threat to these DES daughters. Kimberly Bookman explains. Life seemed so simple in the 50s, black and white TVs broadcasting images of an ideal. The white picket fence home, the perfect family with 2.5 kids. This was a time when the men were coming back from the war. They were getting back together with their wives. They were marrying their sweethearts. They were buying their homes. Um, they wanted to get back to a normal life after what had happened to them. Uh, and miscarriage was something that kind of shattered that dream for them. It was the height of the baby boom, but Andrea Goldstein's mother was finding pregnancy a bust. After two miscarriages, doctors prescribed what was considered a wonder drug, a synthetic estrogen called diethylstilbestrol or DES. She was told that she, if she took this, she wasn't going to have a miscarriage. The circumstances of Andrea's birth were never discussed in her Lynn home until almost 20 years later. I was a senior in high school and uh, we, my parents were at the Boston Globe and I went to look at the paper one day and found that there was an article missing and I asked my mother why it was missing and she didn't want to tell me. And I went to the uh, Boston Public Library in Copley Square, found that newspaper, and found the article. And at that point, my mother had no choice but to discuss it with me. There it was. April 22, 1971, Mass General Doctors had linked DES to vaginal cancer. I thought that I was going to die. It was a different journey for Worcester's Caitlin McCarthy. Remember the date, May 18th, 2005. I um, was having some issues with a precancerous cell activity, so I went in for a coposcopy, and within two seconds of looking at me, the doctor said, what year were you born? And it sent chills, you know, throughout my body. DES was handed out for more than 30 years, from 1938 until 1971. First for problem pregnancies, then later prescribed for healthy babies. Born in 1970, Caitlin was exposed at the tail end. I was horrified. Not only were there cancer concerns, but as DES daughters grew up, they learned the drug may have misshaped their uteruses, causing risks to pregnancy or even infertility. I always thought I'd have children. You know, I love kids. I teach. You know, I have hundreds of students. You know, I have two nephews who I adore. I even adopted a dog. You know, I thought I'd have kids. And now, most likely, that's not going to be in the cards. Caitlin is not married and hasn't tried to have a baby, but these health risks have altered her own white picket fence dreams. And that's something that hangs in the back of your mind, especially when you're dating, because you'll meet some men and, you know, having children's a deal breaker for them. They want those kids. And I can understand that, but I might not be the safest bet. Andrea had several unsuccessful pregnancies. It was a horrible time in my life. Andrea did go on to become a mom, but not a biological one. Now both women, along with 2.4 million other DES daughters, may have a new worry. Here at Boston University, they're studying 6,000 women and looking for a possible link between DES and breast cancer. We are seeing a higher rate of breast cancer in the daughters. We know that breast cancer is influenced by hormone levels. Their mothers were given a lot of these hormones during the pregnancy. They, that way they were exposed while they were in the uterus. So far, researcher Julie Palmer says they believe DES daughters are two times more likely to develop breast cancer than unexposed women. The same risk as women with a history of breast cancer in their family. Research is beginning on the next generation. Who do you blame? I do not blame my mother at all. It was a whole different era. No internet, no easy access to information. Caitlin is trying to change that. At home, she has converted what was to have been a nursery into an office. And it is there that she has given birth to a screenplay called The Wonder Drug. I'm really hoping to open people's eyes and save lives. As for Andrea, as documented in this 1985 Boston magazine, she was the first person to sue Eli Lilly, one of the many manufacturers over DES infertility. The case was settled. She went on to work in an infertility clinic and now devotes her spare time to telling the DES story. It's a complicated one. We are the only population to ever have been exposed to this drug. And so the people who will really know what DES did will be the next generation who looks back at us. The story is even more important today. Hmm. 
Caitlin McCarthy's done with her screenplay. It's now making the rounds in Hollywood, and she says a number of producers are reading it. And Caitlin was heartened in February when the FDA formally acknowledged to Senators John Kerry and Scott Brown that the widespread prescription of DES was, quote, a tragedy. McCarthy had urged the senators to take up the DES issue with the FDA. 